Hey, it's Dave from Bullpen Cycles. I'm coming at you from an undisclosed location in eastern Florida. In a quarter mile, use the right lane to take the I-95 north ramp to Jacksonville. We are going on an exclusive tour of my friend Steve's man cave. Yeah, Steve has a lot of bikes. He's got a lot of cool memorabilia too. So, you're gonna like this video. here this is gonna be good hey it's Frank and Mike we're the pickers uh, hey folks this is oh he's hiding this is Steve and his bear Dexter. cub Baloo Dexter. Cub. oh it is a killer it's Dexter it's a killer yes, it is. Named after? I don't care where you start This was the backdrop of my one video. Yeah, is it better with the uh, overhead lights on? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. So, obviously, tell us about this sign down here. That sign, they used to have road races at the uh, Reading Airport Motors are car road races. Oh, okay. On the airport. <laughs> at, on the airport. And that's a sign. That's an old sign I bought from an antique dealer. He wouldn't sell it. I had to trade him a painted, original painted piece of furniture for it because he wouldn't sell it to me. But that's where it came from. And Ole, he was in Ole, Pennsylvania. Oh, do you know what I did? What? I screwed up. What? Well... Uh, I just jumped right into the stuff. Yeah. I didn't say hi. Yeah. Hey folks, this is Steve. Hi. Last name withheld at our secret location. Oh, yeah. But a lot of you folks know Steve. Yeah. So uh, look at your dog staring at me. They'll see him. <laughs> look at him. Dexter, help. <laughs> <laughs> well, Sit. All right. Did you know who Ed LaBelle was? Uh, no, tell us who Ed LaBelle was. <clears throat> Ed LaBelle was a, uh, had a motorcycle shop in, uh, outside of Philly. He was uh, a Canadian national champion. He raced uh, Norton Maxes at the Isle of Man. He had a Vincent, a well-known Vincent that sold at Bottoms a number of years back called Smoker that he drag raced, a Vincent Black Shadow. Oh. Um, and he was quite the character and uh, quite well-known in the area back in the days of uh, Gene Alcott, who was the, uh, who was the Vincent uh, Dior importer on the East Coast. <clears throat> that is a uh, 53 Vincent Repeat. That has been bored and stroked. Uh, it is now 1500 cc's. Um, the fellow I bought it from uh, was in Denver, Pennsylvania, and he was uh, he was grinding his own cams. He was a machinist. He made the flywheels for it. He, he was grinding his own cams. He weighed about 100 pounds, soaking wet. He made a uh, he made his own coil ignition to replace the magneto because with the coil ignition they're much easier to start. You don't have to spin them quite as fast. And uh, had a Yamaha gas tank on when I got it. He just beat a Yamaha gas tank to go around the inch and a half AML G3 carburetor. So we took this tank and had a pocket cut out to clear for the carburetor. The 1950 Panhead Chopper. Um, that's the Z1R from Motofest last That's year. That's the Z1R from Motofest yeah. last year. So you might have seen that on the video, folks who are watching. And this is a first year H1? Second year. Second 19, year. 1970 in peacock gray. They came in this in red. Um, in our area, you saw more of the peacock gray ones. 
Uh, I've had both, but this is, I bought this from the original owner about close to 40 years ago. What's this little thing? This is, this is actually very interesting. This is a gas tank of a Vincent Hill Climber. There was a fellow in York by the name of BZ Went. And BZ was a national hill climb champion on a Vincent. Wow. And uh, where the heck did you find that? I met BZ up at White oh, Rose okay. Motorcycle Club. Yeah, all right. He gave me his uh, time, his Iskaderm cams timing wheel and signed it for me. Uh, but here he gave me a book to Steve Royer, BZ Went, which kind of outlines BZ's career. Vincent, he, he worked at the Harley Davidson factory. Oh. And, uh, but he was, uh, he was quite the guy and, and rode to Vincent. And he had num various iterations of that bike. This was a tank in the Little Shadow on, uh, on one of them. Of course, you know this bike. Yeah. You've seen it before. That came from our shop. Little Ducati. Uh, you got that at the Harley Davidson swap, swap meet. meet. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah, we haven't done the video there yet. Yeah. I'm thinking of doing Webster next weekend. Yeah. Do you know anything about that helmet? Yeah, I was just, it's an old uh, HA helmet, which is an early showy. Uh, and I had my pinstriper paint it <laughs> with. with uh, uh, oh, that's with a good Steve idea. Steve and JJ. That's a good and, idea. He had me fooled. Yeah. The, a BSA uh, factory cutaway motor from 1963, first year of unit construction. Check out this Triumph factory tank bag yep. on the Nutcatcher. Yeah, they. Uh, I don't have this attached, but they went on the the four. Oh, tanks. they mounted that way. Yeah, they mounted that wow. way. Wow! And they were actually to carry your Gino helmet. Oh yeah, Gino was uh, an Italian helmet. They sold through British dealers, and they, it's a they're aluminum half helmets. Yeah, and you could put your Gino helmet right in there. Of course, everybody needs a bevel drive 900 SS. That's the last year, especially in their house next to their living room. 1982. It's got 5,000 miles on it. They run beautifully. They are truly a magnificent motorcycle. This, this is a flat track motor. It was supposed to be one of the palm grim, mo palm grim motors. I got this from Al Hartman. Uh, I don't have any documentation of that, but uh, I suppose it was raced by one of the palm grim brothers. Chuck and Larry. Norton P11. This would be a low pipe model. I personally like the high pipes, so I put high pipes on it. Cool. And this is a 1600 mile. 1600 miles on that. Original mile, unrestored BSA Lightning. One owner I bought from the original owner. Never been touched in any way, shape, or form. And they still didn't give you left and right mono blocks, huh? Nope. And of course, my group is the motorcycle dealer signs and clocks. Yeah, we were going to talk about it, and I forgot to mention that. Okay. So. But shouldn't we do that when you open up one of your small cabinets? Oh, well, we can do it here. We can open it. Oh, okay. Oh, All right. And then we well, can go to small cabinets. I have an interesting story about the, that clock up there. Okay, so what I wanted to promote here, and I guess I forgot because I got lost in the chrome, is Steve's a administrator. administrator, founder of a Facebook group. And if you like this kind of stuff that's on the wall, you have to check out this Facebook group because it's the community for that. And what's it called? Motorcycle dealer signs, clocks, and stuff. And stuff. And that's the key word, and stuff, because we're going to show it. There's lots of clocks and signs here, but he's got stuff. And one other thing we, we shouldn't forget are the two bikes hanging. The, these are TA125 Yamaha race bikes. This one was ridden by... Gina Bovaird, who is the first woman to finish the Daytona 200. And that's TMB Racing, that's Tom Bovaird, her husband at the time. And uh, then she was also the first woman to qualify for a 500 Grand Prix in Europe. Yeah. And she lives not far from here. No. And, uh, and this is 
basically the same model without the fairing case. So you can see underneath the skin. But this one wasn't hers. No, this one wasn't hers. This one came from a good friend of mine, Leon Blackman, who was the Yamaha dealer who uh, campaigned this bike and it came along with the original MSO. Um, Get out, I didn't know that. Yep, yeah, had the original MSO. <sighs> And he called you. He didn't call and, me. And Dave was after you, for a you, long yeah, time. Yeah, because I have a Moto Marini. And I scooped him. I called him for a carburetor for this bike. Uh huh. I said, Leon, do you have any extra carburetors? He said, Well, I'm thinking about selling my bike. So, uh. I said, what do you want for it? I, we made the deal, and I got, yeah. I got that bike and a truckload of parts with it. So, you want to show some of your signs? This is an early Kawasaki dealer sign. This is yeah, a, look at that. This is a really rare clock. That's an early, probably from the 60s. Um, see the BSA banner back here, a BMW clock. We like all motorcycles, whether we own them or not. Um, so what's Bardal? Bardal is a, uh, an oil, and they mainly known for car oil, but okay. they did sell. I do have a can of Bardal motorcycle oil. Um, there's a Kawasaki sign up there, there too. One of my favorite Kawasaki signs, let the good times roll. Actually, that's the only one of those I've ever seen. That was their yeah. slogan back in the day. Was, was that like, when you were working for them? I worked at, a, at Trans Am Cycle Sales. That, and is, is that original that's movie original poster? movie poster from Little Foss and Big Halsey. Um, one why is it so skinny? That was just the size of it. I got that from Dave Gale and Dave used to have a lot of movie posters. I have a book. It's the official transcript. I don't know why it's on paper book. It's the movie transcript. <laughs> here's a uh, here's a picture of Yamaha at Daytona. I got this from Dennis Mahan. Dennis was worked for Kawasaki, worked for Yamaha. He worked for Canon or Filters. That's Dennis in the middle and he's with jacket. He was a team manager. There's a Dick Mann, Gary Nixon, and I think that's Ron Pierce. Jeez. Um, and he sent me that. I bought a book from him on The Racer, The Story of Gary Nixon. He sent that to me, and he sent that along with it. And uh, he said, yeah, it's me in the middle. I'm with the yellow jacket, and I was a team manager. He's a really cool guy. This came from Gary's, uh, Gary's estate sale. I forget who. Somebody did this of Gary and gave it to him. Uh, this is a poster that most... Deal, uh, they, they did for the dealers, and this was for Free State Cycles. I mean, yeah, there was lot, there was lot, one of these at Eddie Fisher's. Yeah, a lot of these dealers got the they got these posters. Cool. So anyway, we we got to talk about this. Yeah. So I had some T-shirts made of this exact dealer, based on a Matchbook, I think. But tell us about this sign. This sign was uh, in. Uh, Horace and Mamie Fritz's. Horace Fritz, that's uh, yeah, right. Yeah, Horace Fritz in, in, uh, in downtown Reading, Pennsylvania. It was like going into a shoe store. It was a long, narrow store, but they had shop stuff down underneath. But upstairs, you went in, it was like going into a shoe store. And, uh, and they, he sold Zundaps, but did he also sell Indians? Uh, yes, he was an Indian dealer. Was he a Norton dealer too? I don't know if he was. I don't think I, he was I don't know. I just. Yeah. Was, I was too young. But earlier on, he was in India, or not when I was there, but, but when I sold Indians. And that's where my dad bought his first Zundap. But he was a very influential guy in the area, and a buddy of mine, and I missed the sale. They had it when he passed away, they it had was, a state sale. It was in the early 80s or late 70s? Yeah. It was around then. Yeah, and it was late 70s. Yeah, but then, yeah, I would have too. Yeah. Fritz is my brother's name. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this is, here's a, uh, this is Gary Nixon's, uh, Winning a trophy. Um, oh, that's him holding that, that trophy. That's him holding that trophy. With a clock in it. Yep, with a clock. What is it with these clocks? That was a big deal back in the day. Mm -hmm. That came from his estate sale. Here's something you don't see anyway. Judson Research Superchargers. Or, or, Cyclotron. Electronic ignition. Oh, okay. It's a, right. it's a brand new electronic ignition from the 60s. You used to see this in the back of all the magazines. I don't know if they worked, but they were, you always used to see them advertised. This is an old Harley Davidson pocketbook or purse. Oh my gosh. It's an original Harley Davidson purse. To put your Bud Light in. Yeah, I got that from, from a woman in, in uh, 
Yeah, put your Bud Light. I just, I'm going to get in trouble for that one. <laughs> I missed that one. I missed that one. <laughs> I'm going to get in trouble for that. <laughs> no, but you know, they, I suppose they're just endorsing Bud Light. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't know. know. Who, I don't know who I, made that I, move, but... Uh, I, I, I don't want to get demonetized, so... Yeah. What's the Dolly the Dancer? That's it. That's an advertisement for a Harley shop. Hang on. That's an advertisement yeah. for a Harley shop? Yeah, look at it. Yeah. It's getting the light. It's getting the sure. Thompson's Harley Davidson sales. Oh my gosh. We have to do that. Lincoln Highway East. We have to do that. <laughs> and you pull Dolly out oh, and oh, she's, I can't do that. she's naughty. <laughs> no, I can't do that. She's naughty. I think she was meant to be a, a letter opener. But, uh, oh my gosh. But she's naughty. But that was from Lincoln Highway East. I'm glad I asked about that. Yeah. I just, you know, just saw the paper there. <laughs> that is crazy. Here's a, uh, a BSA emblem for a, a super rocket on their front fender. BSA floaty pens with little motorcycles in them. Oh, get out. Let me, let me, let me just put oh, that in the light. I I don't, oh, think, oh. I don't think that one has the floaty in it. There's a, yeah, it, it may not float. There's anymore. a little motorcycle in there. It's BSA motorcycles. There's gonna be a glare. Hi, kitty. Man, that's different. Oh. <laughs> What's this blue one? Which blue one? Oh, oh, that's interesting. That's a, that's a pin uh, that. Uh, Actually, I got that pin from Phil Vincent's uh, daughter. Phil Vincent was... Uh, uh, I'm trying to think what it says. It. Vincent's special. Phil, Phil uh, Vincent's daughter was selling a lot of his stuff probably 25 years ago on eBay. And, uh -huh. and I got this from her. It was a, uh, an engineering award that he won. Um I got a book that's signed by him inside. It was a, it was Vincent H R D Gallery. It was his copy of the book that was presented at the a party for the publication of the book. It was a pre-publication book, and everybody at work for Vincent signed. Yeah. It. Look at this BSA loves you. What yeah. the heck is that? That's a pass. It's just a pass. Yeah, I know, but what? BSA. And is this BSA Hercules my... tires or Hercules motorcycles? That's Hercu I think that's Hercules motorcycles. Because I think there were tires, weren't there? Uh, maybe. But that does look like Hercules, the motorcycles. Yeah. Here's a big dealer badge guy. You're a, you're a quart heart. San Diego, Ariel. Honda stuff here. There's a little coin bank. Here's an early. Wait, there's early. a coin bank. There's a. I don't think I've ever seen a Honda matchbox. Mm -hmm. Oh, a, I'm gonna sneeze. There's a uh, early American Honda hat. Take that out. Get it out of the way. Here's a whole uh, complete a card of stick pins. Honda Motors stick pins. Here's a Honda Wing ashtray. Oh, look at that. That's amazing. What is motor watch? Uh, at one point in time, they were giving out watches when you bought a motorcycle. Uh huh. And that was there's a, a watch. There's there, a watch in, that, in the can. In that can, yep. It's a neat little. I never knew any of that. Whoa, oh, crash! On the crash. Here's a uh, a neat little coin tray from Free State Cycle. Bob Myers has owned Free Street Cycle. I knew Bob. He was a friend. He was a really, really nice guy. He has passed away, but he was a really nice guy. Gary Nixon lived with Bob Myers when he first moved here from Oklahoma. And uh, Bob was one that was instrumental in going to England and trying to uh, get the strike resolved when Triumph went on strike. Oh, okay. It was not successful. That was like 71-ish. So, there's some... Here's some nice three-cylinder Kawasaki playing cards. Yeah. That's the only thing you see. Yeah. <laughs> a set of Kawasaki and the, gloves. And the smoke. And the oil dripping on the ground. Yeah. Here's something. Uh, Kawasaki Z1 coasters. Only the top one is the porcelain coaster. Then the rest of them are just court coasters. But the, uh, the top one was that.
Johnny Holiday. Who's that? I think he's some British guy. Is that a 45 record? Yep. Did you ever Google him I, or YouTube him or anything to hear what it sounded like? I, no, I didn't. Johnny Holiday. I'm going to have to find that. Yeah. Yamaha like to use their racers. You can see they used it in their uh, cigarette lighters. They, uh, here's a whole bunch of uh, mugs with their racers on. Patches with their racers on. They were champions and proud of it. Man, you can't blame them. I didn't know Gary ever raced for Suzuki. Yeah. Here's a, here's something interesting. These came with new Z1s in 1974. Oh. You, you got a polishing cloth. With, yeah. With your Z1. You've got a few of them. Wow. Here's something. Uh, this is a magnetic clip from Sonny Angel. Sonny Angel was a... Uh, Big time motorcycle guy out in California. What's this? That's a water buffalo. Oh, it's a water buffalo. Yep. Jeez. And there's a polishing cloth. These are really hard to find. That's for a 72 H2. 750. These are really hard to find. It, Kawasaki even had their own soda called sake soda oh my gosh and a kawasaki rubik's cube kawasaki soda got a z1 on the can and a kawasaki rubik's cube the garage here we are in the garage here's here's my wife jonna's bike she is a fan of johnny cash as uh, you as you can see did um she has the lyrics to Cocaine Blues on the top. Did Palm Coast Eddie paint that or yes, someone else? Yes, Palm Coast Eddie painted that. Oh, he did that, that really? Yes, yes, he did. Here's a, uh, here's an old Gypsy Tour, uh, Gypsy Tour. Gypsy Tour. Gypsy Tour photograph. What's the Gypsy Tour? That was that thing that the American Motorcycle Club did and they oh. could get together and have a big Gypsy Tour. It was just a big, everybody would get together. And, and that says 1933. Yeah. I didn't know that. There's a Michelin sign, Motoguzi sign. Uh, there's a BSA sign, kind of rough condition, but a clock, but you don't find them. Yeah. A Reading Standard sign, a Triumph sign, and a bunch of other assorted signs and motorcycles. You know, you stuck these two on me. Yeah, I, I dumped them off on him. They're big, but I love them. Uh, here's a 140 horsepower Harley. There's a little set of racing carburetors. Macoonies. Those are Macoonies. Yeah. I've never seen Macoonies that were set up like GP. Yeah, they look like GPs, but they're Macoonies. Brand new. Actually, I, one time I, I got, I, I went down. To and so all you're going to do is take your old set of carburetors, mount them on a plaque, yeah. and then you've got something cool to hang on the wall. That's a good idea. Yeah, I, I West that. Cooley helmet. Yeah, West Cooley. Full bore sign, Honda 750 helmet. Look at oh, that. look at that. Honda 750 matching helmet. Oh, yeah. Is that Honda line yep. or somebody? Oh, yep. Get out. That's a good idea. Put your Harley Gilligan hat on your skull. <laughs> on your skull, yeah. That's an old Harley Gilligan hat. Yeah. Yeah, those are hard to find. Look at an interesting piece. That's a Dresden brake. Dresda S and G Autos. Yeah. I don't even know what that is. Dresda. Oh, they made a lot of cafe racer stuff in England. Ah. Uh. This is an original brake plate for a '64 uh, um, uh, Thruxton Bonneville that they never sold over here. <laughs> Here's an interesting bike. That is a mule made by Richard Pollock in San Diego. He has now moved to California. But uh, he built this for a fashion photographer in Long Island. The guy had a, uh, a place out in the Hamptons, a place in Manhattan, a place in South Africa. And uh, he rode it one time and uh, decided he didn't like it, brought it back and told the guy who managed his collection to make it look not like a Harley. So he painted it satin black and scuffed up all the polished aluminum and uh, sold it to me for probably a third of what it cost him to build 
what I mean, what he paid for a mule. It's no. a CNJ flat track frame. Oh, I see that now. Yeah, I was trying to look. It's got a single. But I was trying to figure out where the master cylinder is. Yeah, uh, it's got a. Uh, is it missing? Well, here's the master cylinder. Yeah, but where's the reservoir? Well, there is no reservoir. The hose is the reservoir. The hose is the reservoir. Yeah. And what's this line here? Is that the oil tank? That's a breather. That's just a breather. The oil is in the frame in this bucket. But this goes into a, some kind of tank. Yeah, that's just a, 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 an excess flow tank. Okay. Um, and uh, very light. Sounds, sounds nothing like a... Uh, I mean, it rides nothing like a... Uh, now, why did he call it a mule? It sounds like Buell. That's his thing. I'm not sure where Richard Yeah, uh, all right. Yeah, that sounds good. Very healthy. Has a built motor, Penske shock, single Penske shock, very light. Feels like a KTM Super Motor. I turned down thirty thousand for it about three months ago. The guy was in here and said, "I give you thirty grand for it right now." And I said, "No, I can't do it." <laughs> this is the Matrella from the York Swap Meet, and if you didn't see that video, you're gonna go back and watch it because it came out pretty nice. Except you decided to keep the Makuni on. Yes. Because you've been riding it? Yep. 